Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name's Ditech, CTO of DVS. Yep, it's getting cold here, so the winter clothes are coming out. Welcome to another how-to video, and today I'm super excited to introduce you to a brand new product. But before we go any further, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Callum, do your thing. Once you've subscribed, you'll get notified of all our content and any of the competitions that we do run. Also, thank you to our channel sponsor, Toshiba. If you haven't checked out their technology, please do check out their enterprise-grade storage solutions available via DVS whenever you buy a built DVR or NVR. So, what are we gonna look at today? Well, I'm super excited to introduce you to these two brand new products. So I'll turn it round. Nope, it's not a water ball because it's tall and thin. It is actually the brand new four inch Tandem View PTZ. Now there's two different models. So, I'll turn them both round. Both are color view. Both have two cameras, so you have a PTZ with a fixed lens color view camera. The reason there's two models is they're both four megapixel. One is a 15 times optical zoom, one is a 25 times optical zoom. For the benefit of this video, we are only going to concentrate on the 25 times optical zoom. Both are in stock, both are available right now at DVS, but for purposes of this video, we will drop it off. There is the part code and information on the 15 times zoom. Let's put it down by there. And this one is the 25 times optical zoom. Again, four megapixel color view, tandem view. Super, super cost effective. What we're gonna do is, I'm gonna find a, I'm not gonna find a knife to open this. So I'm just gonna open it manually. So let's see what you get in the box. Inside the box, you get uh, a wall bracket with metal fixings, nice strong metal fixings. Like most of you do that, when you throw it away, the fixings will go with it, and then you'll ask us for some more. But you get this very small wall mount bracket with the standard PTZ fitment, so it's like a bayonet fitment, which I'll show you now. So all our height vision PTZs have this effective collar fitment where the PTZ fits in there, you screw it down with these two Allen keys here, and you can see it's like, well, we call it bayonet fitting, but it's a very short, stumpy wall mount bracket that comes included in the box for this PTZ. Now that's super effective. That's why the box is tall and thin, um, because it does include this wall bracket, which adds to the cost effectiveness of this product. You don't need a separate wall bracket you can use this one, of course, if you want to fit it to a swan neck or a different kind of bracket, you know, please feel free to do so, but it does come included. Right, the actual camera itself. So you get the manual, like most people, you do that. You get the fitment plate, again, that goes in the bin. You get with it a 12 volt, 3.3 amp PSU. Now, these are PoE, so you don't need this 12 volt DC power supply, but it does come inside the box, so feel free to use it or keep it for another application. Really handy. You get the RJ45 weatherproof socket for the RJ45 uh, LAN cable that comes off the camera. Make sure you fit this. It adds to the waterproof quality and extends the life of the product. Loads of you don't fit that. The amount of times I've been to a site and you haven't fitted that, it's there, it's included. No reason not to do it. You also get the Allen key. And you also get, so I got no nails. You also get this bayonet socket adapter. So if you're, so the same fitting as that. So this effectively is the same fitting as this inside. So this goes on to the top of the PTZ. So if we get the PTZ out, again, this is a four inch model, but just to show you what I mean, So, like the wall bracket or the swan next you come, you can see there's like a ribbed bayonet fit in there. That slides on and it locates onto here. 
It only does fit in one way. There we go. Collar locks in. You tighten the screws here, the Allen bolts here, which locates it in there. Now, if you've got an old style pre-existing bracket or like Ultron or WEC swan neck or corner mount, wall mount bracket, etc., this is that standard thread type which will fit into an existing threaded type bracket if you want to do the conversion. This comes with the PTZ. In fact, it comes with all our PTZs. So it gives you the flexibility to use the height vision bracket or the standard bracket that some people still choose to fit. Just simply tighten it or you can remove it like that. And then the same with the wall bracket, same fitting as this. So let's dispose of this in the correct manner. So on this, I'll pick it up after. You have the safety loom, which goes into the bracket there. And all our swan necks and brackets have this safety loom. It allows you to work on the camera effectively. So it's suspended, takes the weight, and allows you to use the cable in to effectively connect it up. But it also is a safety chain. So if this ever failed or, or stops you from dropping it, especially if you're up a cherry picker or somewhere or a ladder, you don't want this falling on the floor. One because it'll smash to pieces and more importantly it might fall onto somebody or something and damage it or hurt that person so that is why the safety chain exists please do use it the next thing i want to run through i'm all thing fingers and thumbs today so we have underneath here there's a secure like a flap which you can remove that which is basically a phillips screwdriver i'll get one shortly uh, which has got some dip switch settings, etc. You have the PTZ. Oh, that's the most satisfying part of this. And take that off. So you have the fixed lens color view, 4 megapixel, and the 4 megapixel times 25 zoom PTZ. So they'll take up two channels on any DVR or NVR that's compatible. So bear in mind, two channels. And then you have the RJ45 PoE, an earth cable, Again, it's metal, so we suggest you earth it correctly. You have the DC 12 volt. I should have worn my glasses. Audio in and out. And then that'll be alarm input output. Yep, alarm input output. All off that loom. So alarm input output, audio input output, RG45 and PoE, 12 volt DC if you choose to use it, plus the earth cable. So it's a pre-made, really simple, really light camera. That probably weighs, I don't know, three pounds? Two, two to three pounds is super light super small it's again it's classed as the four inch model so entry level but color view technology with the fixed lens and the ptz 25 times or 12 times if you prefer a smaller lens size at a smaller cost so we're going to fit this we've got a uh, bracket on there you can see here we're going to fit this up on here and go through the programming so you can understand what this looks like so i'm going to pause this video and then we'll go through onto the web browser and go through the programming and what functions and features this has. So stay tuned while I fit this quickly and transfer you over. Okay, welcome back to the how-to video. So we fitted the camera over there, which I'll show you in more detail. What I've done is pull up the specification sheet so we can take a quick look at what this product does. So you can see the image there. So it contains both powered by dark fighter technology and color view technology. So the color view is built into the uh, bullet camera here and the power by dark fighter is in the ptz technology so you can see 100 meters infrared 30 meters for white light supports 12 volt dc plus poe plus so i've just connected it to a poe port on the back of the nvr over there which is 30 watt output so it powers it more than enough it does have the accusense technology so we have the more accurate human and vehicle target classification so some more details. So the Lux operating levels, we can see it's 25 times optical, 16 digital. It gives you that it's a focal length, 2.8 mil on the bullet camera, 4.8 mil to 120 mil, 25 times optical on the PTZ. Field of views. Again, the distances, which I've already explained. It can do PTZ presets, uh, privacy masking, all of the usual stuff that you can do with a standard PTZ effectively. Support H.265, height connect. Uh, da -da, just scroll through. You can pause at any time should you want to clarify any of this. And again, alarm linkage. It doesn't have smart tracking. Just a really quick note. It's a really cost-effective small unit. These 
models do not have the smart tracking. It has a panorama linkage tab, which appears to make that show that it has smart tracking, which it doesn't. So just to clarify, the two models we've just uh, discussed do not contain smart tracking. The beauty is, because it's got a 2.8mm lens, you position it in a way that always covers, say, a critical area, like the entrance, a gateway, uh, main entrance door, an area of interest. So the bullet camera was always covering that area, while the PTZ can move around, do a tour, or be used to gain more evidential quality images using the PTZ function. But you always maintain scene integrity by having those two cameras. So one will always be static, the bullet camera, and one will always... Um, be able to be moved, zoomed in, etc. Okay, uh, and then if you move down, it tells you the Dory details. All of our spec sheets now come with Dory details to enable you to design a system more efficiently and add the brackets that will fit with it. Okay, so we're just going to go to the login. So what we'll first do is we'll log out and log back in. So we're doing it from the beginning. Uh, I'm using standard Edge. Uh, well, I will be. Admin. Uh, I used the wrong one. There we go. That is the correct password. Now, as I said, there's two cameras on these models, the fixed and the PTZ. So I'll let that load. If I play both, so you see on the left-hand side is the PTZ model. So I can move, maneuver this round. And again, of course, zoom in. It's quite quick. And there's the stickers there. If that's one of your stickers, give us a shout in the video. A couple of you may notice that. And then we'll come back. And again, I'm by here. Hello. Uh, so we've got the PTZ option there. Again, this is the fixed lens 2.8 mil. And again, that's fixed lens. You can still just about see me here. But again, you can just maneuver that PTZ around to get the fixed view that you require. Again, this is the engine store, so the most logical place for me to put that. I have fitted it inside. It was much easier and much warmer for me to fit this inside and do the demonstration. And I can also make the room dark, which allows me to do the color view part of this. So moving on, you've got playback. So if you did have an SD card fitted in the camera, supports up to 256 gig underneath that little flap, then you could do playback from the camera. Now we do recommend that for a critical camera, it may be too expensive to do this with every camera. If it's an external camera covering a critical function, put the SD card in there. They are very cost effective nowadays. We do sell them, so do pick up them from DVS. Put a, a SD card in there. If you do lose connection to the NVR for a fault, a network issue, or perhaps the recorder gets stolen or broken from a break-in, God forbid, the footage will still be available on the SD card, and that could be totally invaluable. Most likely, the people who do cause damage, thinking that they will destroy the evidence, would not destroy the camera. You know, and even if they do destroy the camera, the SD kit, the, the SD card inside may still be intact. So we're a big advocate for people installing SD cards in cameras where they do cover a critical area. Again, pictures if you've done pictures, etc. Application, we're going to move on from that. Doesn't give us any. Just tells you if there's any faults or the log, etc. Configuration, standard height vision web browser function. So we're not going to spend too long on this. There's the model, uh, and that is currently the latest firmware. Do check on your firmware to make sure it is the latest firmware. Maintenance function, so standard re re reboot. D store restore you can export the device parameters for debug and you've got log system service so you can turn the and enable supplement might is the ii you can turn it on and off uh security again adjust these to your heart's content but lots and lots of functionality in here mac address filters ip address filters authentication types user management network all your standard details in there. It's on line two height connect. I've already added it to the app in preparation for this video. But again, you've got all of these standard height vision functionalities that you can use. Multicast even if you need to use that. Advanced settings, SNMP if you use an SNMP. If you're a whiz, IT whiz kid and you want to use that, 
please feel free to. FTP sends stills to a SFTP, so you've got FTP and an SFTP server if you want it. Most people have moved over to SFTP now. Email functionality, you can send emails based on VCA function, uh, alert, so if it picks up a human or vehicle, it can send an alarm directly from the camera. If you don't want to do it from the NVR, for instance, or if it's a standalone camera. Platform access, we've got ISUP and Hike Connect. It's already online to Hike Connect. ISUP is our Hike Central backend connection protocol, which allows you to add a device directly to Hike Central. What we can do now, using the latest 2.3 Hike Central, we can actually add a Hike Connect device using Hike Connect directly into Hike Central. So here's a little tip for you. You do have to pay a small license, a small license fee per camera added. HTTPS, QoS, integration protocol, network service. And if you don't know, uh, open network video interfaces on VIF. Hike Vision have been reinstated back into on VIF as of like two weeks ago, I think it was. So fantastic news. Network service, alarm server, TCP acceleration, traffic shaping, SRTP. Lots of these most people don't need in a day-to-day -day application, especially if it's a plug-and-play system, but they're there should you require them. Again, going back to the uh, video parameters, both are 4 megapixel. They're set to H.265 out of the box, and I've set them to real-time 25 frames a second. Audio, you can have a microphone in and a microphone out. They don't come with a built-in speaker or a built-in microphone like the, uh, the live guard function PTZs, which do cost a lot more. But you can connect a microphone and a speaker into these. Region of interest and display info on stream. Image, again, both cameras are adjustable. So you can set the on-screen display, date format, uh, custom text, etc. Image switch parameters. Not many people use this, but you can link it to a preset or set scheduled switch. I can't even speak. Uh, depending on the time, so I could have a period, it can go into an outdoor mode. That period, I could set it to an indoor, uh, like an indoor mode or whatever, or a custom mode. So you can choose time periods of what the preset functionality is. We're not going to do that because it's inside, but you can do that. Most of our IP cameras now support this function. PTZ, so basic settings. Like I said, they don't support smart tracking, but you have all of the standard um uh, functionalities of a PTZ, even the maximum tilt up. Yeah, so that would allow uh, greater elevation. It just did jump up a little bit. You've got limit, PTZ limit, initial position, park action. And again, you could do park action, enable it for preset one. So after 30 seconds, any of these actions, any of these presets, and it'll go to that function. Privacy mask, if you are using privacy mask, and again, Hello, using GDPR, if you are uh, covering an area you shouldn't, like somebody else's property, do make sure you enable privacy mask and blank that out. Schedule tasks, again, you can enable that. Different time periods, different activities. Simple, clear config, prioritize PTZ, position settings. Now, this panorama linkage may, may make you feel that you could do smart tracking. The PTZ doesn't support it. They come calibrated out of the box. You don't need to do any calibration. It currently doesn't support it. Whatever it does in the future, that's down to high vision. Currently, they do not. So you don't really need to put any thought into this panorama linkage option. And again, smart events, you've got video tampering, alarm input, alarm output, the exceptions, and alarm audio output. Now, interesting, whilst it doesn't have a built-in speaker, if you do connect a speaker to the audio output, you can still do these presets so like the live guard function if you do connect an external speaker you can still make use of that using the vca you can select audible warning as the linkage method which then feeds it out through the audio of that camera which then feeds into a pa system or a netgenium poe analog speaker that you'd fit next to the product and it gives you the same functionality as the live guard function with it built in with a much cheaper cost so again, if you do want that function, just simply connect a PoE analog speaker available via DVS from that Genium straight to the audio output of that product. Smart event is only audio exception. You do need a microphone connected to achieve this. But again, you can have the audio loss detection increase or decrease the sound intensity. And of course, the storage using the SD card like we just discussed. Now, all of our modern cameras with the latest firmware have separated the VCA into a sub menu. 
So we're going to go into the VCA sub menu. Now under VCA resource, you can have on the PTZ, it can do face recognition or smart event. Now, not many people really, I would imagine, would use facial capture on this PTZ or this product, but you could do it and then you lose the ability to do smart event on the PTZ. But again, the option is yours. We're going to use it as smart event. On the panoramic, it is smart event only. And we're going to click save. We can go into smart event now and both products are available to set up separately. So panoramic and the PTZ. You'll notice under linkage method, both have audible warning. You can see here, but neither have the smart tracking functionality. Like I said, it's not supported for the 10th time. So let's concentrate on the panoramic because it's going to be looking at a constant view. And I know you can use it on the PTZ, if you, especially if you've got a park preset or a couple of presets and you want to monitor and then uh, give it an alert based on a detection type. But it's easier to do it for demonstration on the panoramic. So we're going to enable it on the panoramic and we're simply going to enable uh, let's just do intrusion, that's fine. Up to four zones, uh, detection area, we're going to do it here. So anywhere that goes past the door, only because somebody might come by that door there. Maximum size, we'll make it the same size as the box. Minimum size, we'll make it that big. So it ignores uh, anything larger and anything smaller. We only want humans really. Threshold. I want it in there for more than one second and we're going to save that and again you can do that based on your application i've done many video content that includes this functionality in the setup i'm in schedule 24 7 but again adjust it as you require linkage method notify surveillance center which is of course our software or our app send an email if you're using it upload to the ftp or memory card and the audible warning would fire it through the poe netgenium speaker for instance trigger alarm output and trigger recording okay we'll do that and that's as simple as it gets and you can do line crossing region entrance and region exit okay all of the channels support it and again if you wanted line crossing yeah if you wanted line crossing on the ptz you could enable it on the ptz but just bear in mind ptz is able to be moved and therefore it doesn't always work that well on a ptz okay so we've set that up now and just to show you that work and i'll go back into the live view Again, it is based on AccuSense technology. So we're going to go uh, get the pan of view up. So we should see myself when I move. If I go to configuration to see the box, loads of people ask me this, so I may as well show you. Under local view, Done and save. With these two ticked here under live view, you'll see the box and then obviously the detection pattern. It's good on a web browser because it allows you to see when alarms are being reactive. It doesn't show that on the NVR either. So you don't have a fear of that happening. So if I just pull up this now, again, you can see the detection box when I walk in front of it, which I will do now. Here we go, there's the alarm. And it's as simple as that. And you can see the detection based on AccuSense technology. It works really, really well. What I will do now is I'm going to show you the low light performance. Again, it is AccuSense uh, powered by Darkfly uh, and obviously ColorView technology. So to make the yoke start with this, go to configuration. We'll go to image. Display settings. Wait for it to catch up. If you've used Edge, it's not the fastest web browser, but it will work. Sometimes give it a little tickle. Okay, so PTZ is indoor, uh, day night switch is auto. I can force it, but I'll leave it as auto. I'll put the sensitivity to the highest. And again, with the panoramic, day-night switch is auto, sensitivity the highest. Let that save. And hopefully, I'll go and turn the lights off now. 
and then hopefully the white light will come on giving the panoramic a really good image and will also affect the PTZ. What I will do is move the PTZ in a completely different location. The reason I'm doing this is I want it to be less affected by the white light and then let the infrared yeah we'll let the infrared from the PTZ affect that area and see hopefully what the white light does to the color view technology so I'm just going to stop the video go and turn all the lights off turn as much light source as possible and then we'll reconvene so give me two seconds people okay so we fitted the like I said, we've fitted it. We've been fitting it for a while. We've actually turned off all the lights where I can in the in the room. It's quite dark in here, as you can see through this built-in webcam. There is a bit of light coming off some of the electronic products here. That white light the sees it makes it look like it's really bright in here on the right-hand side here. It's not as bright as that, I promise you. We'll make this full screen. There is some light coming through the side of this banner through the glass door. So it's just enough light where now and again the PTZ or the, the color view will switch in and switch out. Now I can adjust it through the settings, but for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna leave it as it is, and hopefully that we'll see the effect on this. So you can see the infrared using the IR, the PTZ looking completely the other way, is not affected by the white light of the panel view. Again, this is a perfect example of where two technologies coexist and really support each other. So the infrared of the PTZ, which is a much further reach and gives a really good black and white image. Um, but again, it gives a really good distance and it allows you to see in zero uh, lux effectively down to no light at all. The color view on the other hand, illuminates the area. So it's a great deterrent. Uh, it gives a health and safety benefit, but it gives the most important thing, really good quality evidential footage to allow you if required to use that uh, you know for evidence purposes in, in color to give more detail about the scene so as you can see you can the, the vca is still set up and effective i'm going to walk in front of that and trigger it so you can see that the red box will still go using like again very dark in this room uh, it'll still trigger using the built-in white light then i'll go and move in front of the ptz so you can see the difference the two effects of the images. I'm just going to turn the laptop so I can make sure it's triggered because it is dark in here. So I want to make sure that the uh, algorithm or that I am in the right area to be detected. So firstly, go to here. There we go. So you can see uh, it's a very good evidential quality. Even if I stand as far back as possible, you can see DVX midrich top here. Yeah, probably do a losing a bit of weight. But you can see really good evidence quality. If I move up to the PTZ. And again, there we go. So you can see uh, the VCA still worked on both ways and you can see the difference between the infrared image and the color view image. So if I just escape that, hopefully this video gives you a really good insight. I'm gonna turn the lights back on uh, shortly, but hopefully this video gives you really good insight. Two cameras, one product, one cable, super cost effective. Both benefit from the Powered by Dark Fire with the color view technology. If you've got any questions, they're in stock now at DVS. Please do get in contact with your DVS sales rep and we will give you more information. Other than that, take care, stay safe and see you in another how-to video.